knows me, knows how I handle business. I'm not uh, an ordinary recycling center where you go and have a bunch of trash debris and everything. Uh, in fact, my site, I would consider it super, super, super clean. So, is it a market or is it No, no. It's just an industrial site. It's light industrial zone for light industrial. It's, it's in the... Okay, I don't know if you guys remember. Is a building or we have no, metal canister? There's no building. It's just a parking lot. Uh, you guys know where used to be? Lucky Lumberyard used to be? Yeah. Right there. So right, I'm using the, the Rossi's property. So what I what I have is just containers where I store the plastic, the aluminum, and a bin container for the glass. But what I do, I fill up these huge bags, and I transport them in my own truck. So I don't have any heavy trucks coming in, you know, uh, all in those material. So it's just a, a 16 footer truck that I have, and I deliver the material every day. Every day or every other day. What's the hours of operation? Eight to five. Seven days? Uh, Sunday night to two. So seven days open? Seven days open. But for the same reason that I'm on an industrial site, so I have no, no, the closest house I would say is over 80 or 100 feet away from me. Are you the only person working or you have an employee? I have two, two employees. Um, okay. Question I have is, do you, you know, there's a, for example, there's a recycling center, say your recycling center on a wedding right at the Ralph Supermarket in Monterey Park. They have a change there where you can either be serviced, you know, you can bring product material, you can be attended, or you have a self-service thing. You give you a voucher for the full, the full, the full value of the item, whether it's 24 ounce black or not all 10 cents, or 12 ounce can like that, 5 cents. Now, how does your business operate compared to that? Basically, it's just per week. I don't do well by law. I have, if you bring me less than 50 items, Per transaction, I have to take them, um, five cents or ten cents. But most of it is weighted, so I have a scale, and every, everything gets weighted, and you get cash. Since so obviously I don't have a market next to me that I can, you know, give a check or a voucher where they can go cash me. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, I didn't, I didn't exactly know what the requirements were. One. Is the only one. Uh, the other three are family owned, but it's not mine. So, my brother owns... Yes, well, the different cities. Yes, on the, on the other three, yes, we do. Yeah, it's the same name, just different addresses. Yeah. Yes. Well, technically, no. No, because we have one, two, and three. So that, that's, more, that's what changes everything. One in downtown LA, one in Bell Park, and the city of That one, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, City of Bell, and then Montebello. Anything related? Uh, okay. Okay. But, uh, I want to go back to you. Why did you attract the big Because city planning came to me. City planning came to me and they told me that I needed a business license, so I started working on things. But the fact that, that I would say about a year and a half ago. Yes. Yes, I believe so. Yes. That's what the point of the. No. So it's not just now that No, what I did, I made a deposit. Okay, the inspectors came and obviously since I didn't comply, because the permit itself it was close to twenty twenty one thousand dollars. Okay, because again, it's a conditional use permit. Okay, so the conditional use permit is not just 
you know, you go to the city hall, you apply, and done. It's a whole process. And back then, I didn't have the funds. So, the 21000 I didn't have it. So, that's why it took me almost two years to come into compliance. So, you find it for your job? Yes, I did. Uh, every year was about $600 every inspection. No, in fact, uh, no, no. I mean, I hope I'll lie to you. And that's why you took me a long time, and I and I talked to an inspector, and obviously my landlord, um, up to a certain point, he was going to finance me the money, but since it was a lot of money, he couldn't do it. So. The space is there, but I don't think it's going to grow. Um, if you mean facility-wise expanding, more, no. Volume, maybe, but since there's new laws and new regulations that started since November, our volume has gone down tremendously. Do you have a definition for uh, No, I don't. You can look them up on California. Uh, it's calrecycle.gov. And one of them, the most recent one, is uh, the scrap plastic. The scrap, uh, the scrap plastic, uh, before we were able to buy Comingo with a bottle of water, and now we can't. I mean, you can bring it to me, but it's up to me if I buy it or reuse it. So that plastic literally is ending up in landfill. So the only thing that we're allowed to buy is CRV. So you can't, you can't no, no, that one, yeah, because that's CRV. But what, if Regular you, plastic. If you remove the label, yeah. I don't know if it's CRV or not. So, in other words, I can't buy it. Yes. Uh, so you're saying the plastic, uh, I guess a perfect example would be a milk carton or right. a juice container. Well, no. Not, not if it's 100% juice. If it's 100% juice, it's considered scrap. If it's... If it's concentrate juice, it's still under under the CRV program. Right, like a concentrated juice will be like minimate sometimes comes in aluminum can, right? Right, okay. and that's CRV. All right. Um, my my thought process is saying here that your business fell off after these new rules and regulations that went into yes. effect in November. So are you? So you're saying that the that the cut in you broke the test of your business? No, it's not. It's not, but it's not. Okay, there's, how can I explain it to you? Like for example, the coffee shop, okay? There's X amount of residents that live within a two mile radius. The chances are of the business growing, you know, it, it's gonna reach a stop. Why? Because I don't think clients from, or residents from Pasadena are gonna come and have coffee here. Unless the coffee is super delicious. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with my recycling center. So only, Two three miles are gonna come in and recycle with me. I'm not gonna get clients from Monterey Park, from Rosemead, which the closest city I have is Alhambra, and I do get a lot of clients from there. But even on, on, on this side of the I know I would say that the northern side they don't come and recycle with because there's another recycling facility on Eastern. You know that serves them. So but I wouldn't I wouldn't like you guys to associate my recycling center with that particular one. Because that one, I'm pretty sure you guys have received not just one or two, but many complaints from that particular recycling center. So, in the contrary, I mean, I'm not surrounded by homes. I need to give you a fifth net. I don't let people hang out in my place. I don't allow any drinking, anything in my facility. So, not like the other facilities. Correct. Correct. There's no drugs here. In fact, uh, I, you know, I don't like none of that. I don't, I don't like to be associated. I don't like anyone to come and say, oh, look at that recycling center, dirty, or things like that. Thank you. I just want to get one public comment here. Okay, as you noticed, uh, the gentleman is well prepared, well schooled. He's answered most questions. Uh, he did a very good job. I hope that this board uh, 
gives them the, the letter of hokit when you make the motion or however you, your process is here, that you vote for it. Because he also has two employees that would like for him to elaborate a little more on the insurance, what it covers and what it doesn't cover. But as you can see, he's going to be paying taxes to all levels of government in fact, and all of that and what have you. So I think it's a win-win. He's limited to how much he can grow, but he's willing to stay here to however the limit is and, and make the best of it and, and so he can make uh, some money. Because he's there for, for business, for profit, which is good. I have one more, Mr. Yeah, when I was involved in the brewing industry, I think it was called the bottle pill. And the, the brewing industry wanted to completely destroy the bottle pill. I mean, they, they shipped us up to Sacramento to make sure the recycling didn't come in because it was possible. Well, let me tell you something. The way I look at it is, number one, he's in a light industrial area. That's important. Not really getting anybody involved in the residential area. Number two, because of the new regulations I saw in the newspaper, that a lot of these folks that are recycling, they're hurting. So if you're hurting collecting because the, the plastics are not allowed to be used to pay for the, 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 the right? The, the milk containers and all that, they're not allowed to do that anymore. The other thing is a lot of people were cheating. They were bringing aluminum from other states. And so that had, uh, now you have to be able to sort them out, right? Right. Just to comment on that briefly, you guys don't know where the, it's called the Active Recycling Center, off the 710. Do you guys know the reason why the gentleman was shut down? Mm-hmm. I know. He was bringing material from out of state. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So he was, it was fraudulent. He was, he made tons and tons of money doing that. So, and that was the reason why the state, you know, got to him. So I would, I would definitely support him on the fact that there are people in this community that really need that little extra income. You might even be looking at one right here, right? So, hey, yeah, I'm going for I it. Have, I have one for you. I see a lot of that. I heard everything. Shopping carts full of... Right. And they're coming down the escalator. Right, they come from Alhambra. So, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, I know you can't control that, but, uh, I mean, they all, you know, you could somehow, you know, uh, say something to them, and they yeah. find a better way of bringing them to Um, that's a okay, so I'm going to go to the next one. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, yes, um, to be honest with you, again, since... I like to keep my recycling center clean. I don't like this people. It's not that I, I don't, I don't, yes. Yes, I do. But I think the city itself has regulations for, they call it dumpster diving. So these people, they go through your trash cans and, you know, dig out the, the recyclables. Now, as the result, as the result of these new changes, most of these guys have been eliminated. Why? Because most of the scrap material, you guys will put it in the recycling bin, and then you guys will save the good material, the CRV, to go redeem it. No. So, little by little, these people are going to start decreasing. Can you let him stay on the insurance that I asked him the question? Can he elaborate briefly on the insurance? What is protecting? We have item on the just a that? regular uh, insurance, just worker what does that mean, regular? Just worker compensation. That's the most important one. And that's the highest one I pay. Um, just for that's it. I mean, there, there's what if somebody trips bringing the stuff and moves oh, that's the liability. Oh. You have that? Yeah. Do you have any other public comments? Yeah, I have something. We know currently right now. I could waste your time there. That's three yeah. hours there. Oh, like, like, man, like you wouldn't believe, okay? And it's great. You know, I, 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 the project you have to do is really fully supported, okay? And I'm going to go to the okay? We still have a security for this to be ready for it. Now, one more thing, if there's something that you guys will, I don't know, um, it's very close again, my location, so 
there's something that you guys would like me to change about how it looks or any ideas on how to improve it or any ideas on how to make it easier for me and for the community, you are more than welcome to make any changes. Um, that way it looks better uh, and it's pleasant for you guys to come and talk to me. Thank you. Not only that, even the program has your food. They don't have food of them, they have mula. You're welcome. Well, I have to make a note. We have three or six board members. No problem. No problem. Well, we're calling you in your meeting. I think it's one of you. Now, four minutes have to be here. Can't be here. You've got to get rid of one. Otherwise, it's a trivial meeting. You must get rid of one. Don't have a choice. <laughs> no. Because I've been here before you got here. It's usually the last board member to walk in gets to, to walk out. Yeah. One must leave. One, one must leave. Providing, oh, yes. providing, a, thank you. Providing a letter of support to uh, the city. Within 50 feet, Jordan. Well, you know, I came here. I mean, ever since we came to the board, after the board, we came to you over two years ago. based upon the fact, too, that you would put down your money for the permit fees that, are, that, that you're going to be spending moving this project forward, okay? Um, I would I would vote in moving this project forward, but I would also, I also agree, understand the Mr. Marcus' sentiment that many businesses that come here have and on one hand, if somebody if somebody is not being contrived about their path, then that's an issue that the committee would, would undertake in case of any other situation. Okay. But uh, since I believe you show the proper construction, I believe we can move this project forward. Okay. A motion that the LA motion that the LA Territory Neighborhood Council support the, and it, you need a proper permit thing to get your work? It's, um, if you don't mind, it's like that. I want to make sure you got the proper verbiage. Okay, and, 
which has a bite back. I think everybody find them it's uh, the dictation of an existing or permitted buyback recycling. And then incorporate the language there in uh, the permit number or the C. Thank you. And then incorporate the the, the the applicant name and we'll just get an application. No, it's just all on it. Right
not be in favor of a beer and wine license for that establishment. Later, upon chancing into walking into the, to the, to the, to the business, I observed beer and wine for sale in, in, uh, in cabinets. I also observed beer or wa- being sold singly behind the food counter at the establishment. Okay. Um, when a couple, bo- couple people went to the last CPAP committee meeting, this information was presented to Captain Baeza and the Hollenbeck division because the Hollenbeck police division had a long standing practice of not approving any new beer or wine or liquor establishment besides this piece, beyond the tip number of 249 within within the, the, the jurisdiction of the Hollenbeck, the Hollenbeck station, okay? So, in that time period, the question was asked to Captain Baeza how uh, this step this was allowed to move forward and Captain Baeza basically said that this, um, this station, this, um, this merchant slipped through the cracks through ABC and the Neighborhood Council in terms of supporting this establishment to get a beer and wine license. Okay. The issue is, 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 a, is, a, is a, an important issue because right across the street from the establishment you have a, a Catholic charter, a Catholic school, you know, public, private school, okay? Right, right from the street, maybe about a hundred feet, you also have a recreation center with children, and also nearby you have establishments that are also selling beer and wine in that general proximity. Okay? Under, um, if I'm correct, ABC would have had a serious issue how that area was allowed to obtain a beer and wine license considering the proximity to those sensitive locations that I mentioned. Um, I think also, too, uh, since I will refer some comments, Mike, my kind of elders, Mr. Market, who was a chair, co-chair of the Mike Committee during the last uh, LA32 board that dealt with this issue, and he could give you some more background on the issue of that time period. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the minutes from the Landmuse uh, Committee meeting. This is uh, back in uh, May 2, uh, May, May 2, 2011. And uh, the minutes basically show that there was, there was a presentation made to the committee. There was a lot of questions asked about the owners and why they were refused to hear white license prior to this. There's, there's a lot here, but I'm not going to go.